Thank you so much for staying with us, everyone. The election, perhaps, is not over in Lagos because counting is still ongoing and sorting in some parts of Lagos. Results have been announced in some other parts of the town. But as we speak, the exercise will be, condu uh, will be concluded when last year releases all the results across the 57 LGs and LCDAs. Then we are assessing the conduct of the exercise today. Mr. Yadowale, former chairman of uh, Amu World of in, in Lagos, uh, a former aspirant in uh, Lagos uh, governorship, uh, uh, Lagos uh, chairmanship uh, election, uh, Dayo Israel, a former commissioner in Delta State, resident in Lagos, Kano Kolubo, and uh, a rights activist, uh, Samson Itodo in our Abuja city, they've been on the panel tonight on the program. Let me come to you, Mr. Yadowali. I mean, from your experience as a, uh, as a former chairman uh, of, of Amu World of Fame, in your area, that's, that seems to be one area that a lot of people would say is very sensitive, is a, uh, is a volatile area politically. Uh, how did it go in your area? Well, the election went very smooth and uh, people did turn out regardless of the fact that there was a heavy downpour and uh, it is much expected uh, that uh, voter turnout will be a bit low considering the amount of funds that will be expended on uh, campaigns on publicity and all whatnot and you must understand the fact that uh, whenever you talk about voters awareness you cannot compare the amount of energy resources that is spent on the general election in terms of the presidential election or the governorship. I mean, these are heavyweight elections that a lot of things do go into it, and there are so many stakes that are very, you know, played up. But for local government election, I mean, the platform is still just scaling up, and uh, people are getting to be more aware. And that is why some of us have always called for the uh, restructuring of the Nigerian constitution to the extent that local government become more important than the federal or the state. Government is built from bottom to top, but as long as there's more concentration at the top, you're going to still have this kind of situation where people care more or less about the happenings at the local government level. Uh, we didn't see uh, so much of campaigns. I see a few posters here and there. Uh, was it that people were not concerned because a lot of people have this belief that in local government elections, the ruling party in the state always carried the day? Well, it depends on how you are looking at um, the campaigns. For local government elections, you see less campaigns on mass, mass public, I mean mass media. You see more campaign on, 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 on a one-to-one -one basis and to the extent that you see people pasting posters and all of that. Uh, for one, me... I am against poster pasting because uh, it tends to deface the environment. Uh, for, our, for us, we concentrated more on the social media and, of course, radio publicity. Take, for instance, channels television. It will take me millions of naira to roll out publicity for about a month if I've not been spending up to 100 million or more. There's nobody that can afford that in the local government level. To, to put a paid advert, a political paid advert on channels, for about one minute, it will cost you nothing less than uh, near, nearly a million, nearly a million. <laughs> and you have to be rolling that on <laughs> at least three, three yeah, times a day. Three or four. Totally no, 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 go check it. Publicity, <laughs> political <laughs> adverts are very, very expensive. I'm not taking away the fact that they are expensive, but yes. not, your estimate may not be right. You, you wanted to... Yes, I was going to add to uh, what uh, Comrade has said, that um, local government election is more grassroots, is more connected directly to the people. Um, during my campaign, I used a lot of social media. At the same time, did a lot of community engagement. We had a concert. We had a community project. We had a vocational training where we trained 7,000 people in over 40 skills in the community. So these are the kind of activities that other aspirants or candidates have adopted in their community. But um, beyond that, so a, a, lot of, a lot of this happened before the primaries. But it, because of some of the uh, debacles that happened um, before parties were able to vote PDP and the APC arrived at the final candidate. It didn't give a lot of time for people to, the candidates themselves, to really go into the community and do a lot more than they would have done. So I had people saying to me today, ah, this election, eh, if there had been an opposition party, they would have released money for us in our own party to spend and all that. So people, you know, were saying those kind of stuff. But the reality was that 
it was also the same people who delivered for their various parties in the grassroots. So, for example, in my community, we had people who came out of it. When I got to my polling boat, as of about 11 o'clock, there were only about 20 people who had come to get accredited. So a lot of us went out there and started knocking on doors and saying, you know, you need to come out. This is an election that relates to us. And also, it's this kind of thing that also happened over the past few weeks. So we knew that, okay, we are party as a candidate. We want to go back into the community and start talking to our neighbor. Please vote for us. Please support us. But generally speaking, as a, 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 a public commentator, um, I believe that we need to also do more in ensuring that candidates, in particular in local government level, are able to sell their vision to the community. Mm. So a lot of what we see over the years is candidates or aspirants coming in to just do rallies. Okay. There's a difference between rally and actually campaigning and say, I will do this and do this and do this. Because right. when no promise is made, there's nothing to hold them accountable to. Okay. Uh, let, let me quickly go to uh, Samson Itodo in Abuja. Uh, you were not so impressed with what you thought were preparations, especially for uh, last year, the commission organizing this election. But from the reports that you have gathered today, what is your take on the local council election in Lagos today? Well, I, I did express um, my reservation yesterday um, when uh, I, I spoke on the level of preparations. Um, there are three things that are very critical in the management of elections, and if you want to guarantee the success of elections. First, adequate planning or early planning. Second is the organizational capacity of the, organization, of the AMB, or the election management body. And the third is the availability of resources for the EMB to conduct its work. And if you look at all the, the trends and the analysis, you will see that on your previous um, panel talked about the lack of planning on the part of the, the Electoral Commission. Um, you can still see that there are logistical challenges. And these logistical challenges do have the capacity of undermining the integrity of the elections. I did also say yesterday that I'll be very shocked and surprised if litigations um, are not recorded as a result of this um, election. If you also look at the reports, there are also cases where there were diversion of election materials, where even um, security agencies also nabbed um, um, election materials in the custody of, of, um, of um, other commercial buses or also, so that, that's, that creates, that creates a, a huge challenge for the integrity of the process. And I'm also saying that the, the, the LASAC did say they were going to use card reader for accreditation. What happened? Why didn't they use the card reader any longer for, um, for accreditation of, of voters? Uh, uh, so when you look at this whole process and you do your analysis, and, and, and I'm actually interested in the results collation and how this results collation process will be conducted, and let's see what is the outcome um, of this process. For me, I do have doubts about the integrity of, of, of today's elections as a result of the several indicators and the factors I've highlighted. And the fact that you had a state house of assembly amend an electoral law within this week it was like your previous speaker said it was introduced and it was passed on the same day what i still consider very criminal and very infamous act and no state of the federation should adopt what happened in lagos because it defies the principles of the rule of law and constitutionalism and we must rise up to condemn the act of amending an electoral law a week just in the week of the election, just because you wanted to satisfy um, the desire of the ruling elite in Lagos. And that's a dangerous trend, and we must condemn um, that trend. And so for me, um, I, I think the, the TMG Observer Shola was very magnanimous when he said four. For me, I think it's two. That's how, what, how you read uh, the last set today. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but, well, let, let, I'll come back to you shortly. Uh, just before we go on the break, uh, sh uh, just a, a quick one. Uh, the conduct of this election, from last point of view, uh, what's your take? <laughs> 
You see, the thing about it is, this is what we're talking about. They just took the, they don't even have the data, data they, they have no access to the data. But, but, but they said that they're using the INEC. They're using INEC voters register, but they don't have access to the data. So what they did was that they just took the INEC register without having any access to the database. You can't even conduct an election that you, you don't, the card readers don't belong to them. The card readers belong to INEC. This is what we are talking about. This is why it should actually be independent. You call it the Lagos State Independent Electoral Commission, but it's, it's really okay. independent right. when you're dependent on the voters register for, for INEC. Right. Let, let's go on a short break. But when we come back, we dig more, and we did ask some voters why there is a ton of low ton, uh, voter turnout. You'll be interested in hearing what your thoughts are. Stay with us. We'll be right back.